Hi, I'm Sarah, teacher turned homeschool mom of three, and today I'm going to be sharing a look inside our most recent unit study on ancient Rome. For those of you who are new, my three kiddos are seven and a half, five and two and a half, and we are loosely doing a first grade um, history this year using History Quest early years early times as our spine and then stretching out some of their topics into unit studies. So we used their several units on Rome as the basis for our unit study. There were three units on this and we stretched this out over six weeks. And so we have really enjoyed using the audiobook version of History Quest, and we listen to it in the car when we're running errands, and then we're able to kind of stretch that out into a unit study. Some of the resources that I used um, to pull this kind of more together and more cohesive as a larger unit were Ancient Civilizations Romans from um, Nomad Press, their Exploring Your World series, and then this DK find out ancient Rome book. And so these were my spines for this particular unit. I really like these ancient civilization um, books from Nomad Press because they have projects and they have information and timeline stuff. It's really just a great way to turn a smaller portion of a curriculum into a unit, which my kids really enjoy. So they have the introduction and then they go through the different chapters and they have sections on, you know, like daily life with home stuff and um, eating and school. They have things on gladiators and fashion and emperors. And so they have all these great components in here, like timelines. So we can pull this straight from here to put into our school nest history timeline book. They have projects. They have vocabulary highlighted on the sides. They also have a full glossary and um, vocabulary list in the back. And so some of the projects we do and some of them we save for another time. So just kind of flipping through to see some of the things in here, making an aqueduct, eat like a Roman. They have some investigations. They have background information, the vocabulary, little puzzles. So I really love this for helping me decide, you know, what order we're going to do things in and to pull some vocabulary terms from. Another resource that we used, I really love this newer series from DK. I think we all grew up with the like eyewitness books. This newer series is the DK Find Out book and they have, where's their list of all the other ones they have? They have a whole bunch. Well, there's not very many listed here, but you can check that out online. And these are great because they give just the right amount of information for a like early to middle elementary age. And my son could read a lot of this. I could, you know, read it easily in a sitting. It's not too much information. Um, I really feel like this is you know, kind of the sweet spot with the amount of information and they have a nice combination of pictures and diagrams. They have some you know, little funny kind of components. Here's some art pulled in, medicine. They have, um, you know, cracking the code with the Roman numerals. In the back, I think they have uh, which god, oh, so like figuring out like a little quiz, like which god, Roman god are you? Um, these were great little snippets that we actually ended up making a copy of and cutting out. They're like little cards. Some great drawings and diagrams going through the architecture. So again, this was a resource that we pulled out every day that we were using um, for all the different components of this particular unit study. So I highly recommend these ancient Roman, um, sorry, I highly recommend these DK find out books. Another spine that we have been using this whole year for our history is the Usborne Encyclopedia. Of world history. This is a hardback. It is kind of just hanging in there. So I'm not sure if the um, soft cover editions, you know, kind of hold up better. I almost wish this were broken into volumes, but nonetheless, it has been a great resource. All right. So here we are with the ancient Rome section. Again, I love the amount of information that's on here. We did some note taking from this using some of our strategies from IEW. 
and it's just, you know, we love Usborne, so this is great. You know, they have the little diagrams with like, you know, the different parts of the legionaries. Just again, a really great resource to pull in. And we have used this book for all of our unit studies and history this year. And I really appreciated this spread on the spread of Christianity. Um, just enough information going into the historical aspects of Christianity and how that, you know, kind of played out during the Roman Empire. So if you are looking for, you know, that one book to use all year for you know, history, this is the one. Push that aside. Okay, my next set here are just some additional resources that we used throughout our study. Typically, I use the Magic Treehouse fact trackers as a spine of sorts. Um, I really like how they are laid out um, with their chapters. We can do some shared reading of it. However, this particular one really was focused a lot on Pompeii, and we did not dive into Pompeii just because of the sensitivity of my two oldest. Um, it was not something that we were really ready to go into all of that. So we did use a lot of this book, but not all of it. Again, we've got a great setup of ancient Rome. I love using their first chapters of these fact trackers for our introduction week. Our first week of any unit study is intro and geography. And so the first chapter of all these different little Magic Treehouse fact trackers um, usually provides a great overall introduction. So again, we have, you know, pictures, we have the diagrams and the drawings, Roman military. My son loved this section. He used this picture to draw um, his legionary in his notebook, which I'll show you in a minute. This was a new series that I found um, when looking for texts that my son can read, and they have Greece and Egypt as well. And so I went ahead and got those because they're so fun. And they have a Vikings one that we will use next year. So this is a graphic novel novel with a lot of great information and activities and pictures. And this was a really great resource. My son loved reading this. Again, we've got some of the timeline features. There's a little story kind of running throughout it, going over the myths and legends. There's, you know, fun little things like mazes and um, some Roman numeral information, Latin. This was great. A lot of you saw our notebooking page on Roman numerals and wanted to know where it was from. And this, again, is from this graphic novel. And this was a great little activity for us to do after doing our lesson on Roman numerals. How to play this game you know, making model aqueducts, all about the Roman gods and goddesses. This is really similar to that one I was showing you in um, the DK book. And we ended up using both of those for our own little study on Roman gods. Recipe for honey cakes, the different types of gladiators. You know, this is a really nice mix of information and story and crafts and just kind of like fun stuff. So we really enjoyed this. Every unit study that we do, I try to pull in some decodable text or text that is appropriate for my son's current reading stage. These Usborne books, um, the Usborne Beginners, they have a couple other um, series that are informational based, have been great. We also really love the National Geographic ones. They did not have a National Geographic reader for ancient Rome, which they should. So again, this is really um, basic information. Again, we used this for the introduction to each week. So the week we did daily life, he read the what to wear and the going shopping pages. And then we kind of spaced it out the week we did um, architecture where he read the building power. We incorporate our content for science and history into our reading and writing. Uh, another little book, I had the Growing Up in Ancient Greece book, and it was just a really 
simple way to kind of have these great pictures um, and tie in with kind of like the daily life aspect. So we used this a lot the week that we um, focused on the daily life in ancient Rome. Unfortunately, these have not been in our library, so I have been finding them secondhand using Bookfinder, and I think it was like $3, including shipping. This was a new series to me from David, David Long, and I love it. Um, this is We Are the Romans Meet the People Behind History. They have a couple of other ones. I don't know if they have them listed here. Um, and it's, you know, a different page on all the different kind of people that you might experience in ancient Roman times. So builder and mosaic maker, teacher, freed slave, enslaved boy, patrician. So this was great. We really enjoyed this one. Um, I couldn't find this in our library either. So again, secondhand um, book finder is the way to go for secondhand books. Modern rhymes about ancient times. This is the ancient Rome one. They have a couple other editions. I think ancient Greece, um, maybe ancient Egypt. And they're just little, you know, poems about different aspects in Roman history. And so this was fun. We would just kind of pull this out um, during morning time or during lunch or whatever for the topics of the week. This one is out of print, otherwise I would have purchased it. We love these Osborne flap books. Um, so from the library it was, and just another great, you know, kind of fun interactive way to learn more about ancient Rome. Um, I was really surprised, a lot of these flaps, I don't think this book has been checked out in a while because usually when we get lift the flap books from the library, it's, you know, kind of been through a lot, but these were like some of them had never been opened. So we love these. I always look for um, Osborne books to see which ones are available and our library usually has them. This is a David Macaulay book. Um, we love his work. My son is really into architecture and so we use his books a lot. This is um, just kind of going through Roman planning and construction and we did not end up reading this or watching the PBS version. There is a um, like documentary kind of style video um, produced by PBS I think and it's on my YouTube playlist which I will link um, for Ancient Rome. But just looking through the pictures and seeing like the line drawing, um, this was really helpful for my son for when he was doing buildings and drawing stuff um, to see this kind of representation of the architecture. Okay, this ne next set of books are resource books that we use throughout the year and throughout multiple years. Um, and these are ones that we own because we end up referencing them so often. So I am gonna show you just the parts that are applicable to ancient Rome. So let me move those aside so I can actually get them in the camera. Okay. This is DK's When on Earth. They also have a Where on Earth book. That one wasn't so great for this particular unit. Um, they did have a great page on Hannibal though in this one for Ancient Rome. So we read this and looked through all the different parts of it. I think that was the main, nope, they had other pages too, that's right. The Roman Empire and the spread of the Roman Empire at its um, largest some Bible story kind of history in here. So this was great to pull out for this. And again, we have pulled this out for multiple other units. So this has been great. Next up, we have the Atlas of Adventures, Wonders Around the World. And they had a page on, I think it was the Colosseum. Let's see. I try to, um, I pre-mark all of our pages with um, post-it flags before we begin our unit, just so that I, especially for these big reference books, we're not like kind of flipping through it, trying to find the right page. And so I always flag them in advance. So here is the Colosseum page. Again, it's mostly picture and then just a little bit of writing. Um, it just doesn't take long to kind of include and my kids love flipping through these. So usually what we'll do is I will, you know, kind of flip open to the page we're doing and then leave the book out and they'll end up, you know, kind of reading through the rest of it.
This is the DK um, through time series. They have a street through time, a city through time, a child through time, and now they're starting to come out with um, specific you know, regions of the world through time. Um, so these are fun. This is a street through time and they had a Roman street. And again, this is a book that now that my oldest is reading, he's able to kind of just peruse on his own. So we have, you know, a little bit of information and then mostly pictures with some additional information on it. So this is, you know, fun to kind of include. And again, they have all different parts through time. So we will use this throughout the years. A Child Through Time has been one of our favorite editions this year. Again, we've used this for all of our history studies. And here we are, we have A Child in Ancient Time and going through kind of a timeline down here and explaining kind of like the life of a girl, in this case, um, during ancient Roman times. They have a nice combination of maps and drawings and diagrams and images of artifacts. So I like that. Again, DK is really great for doing that. And my last book in this section is the history year by year. Again, this is a reference book that we pull out um, time and time again. I went ahead and flagged the parts we would read and kind of notice about ancient Rome. I like this book because it puts the study that we're doing into perspective of what else is happening in the world at that same time. And so sometimes when we're doing unit studies, it can be hard to kind of compare that and relate it to what else is going on in the world. And so this is really nice for putting it into that kind of context and perspective. What do we have down here? Oh, Hannibal again, Roman's new army. So again, I have flagged the sections that we will be reading in here and I include them in our, um, lesson plans and I will show you through Notion um, what I do for that. My next section is a stack of books about architecture. My oldest is really into architecture and so these are some reference books for architecture that I pull out whenever they are applicable to what we are learning about in our homeschool. This is the DK Architecture Visual History and there was a great section on Roman architecture. So we pulled this out, we looked mostly at the pictures, we read some of the little parts as, you know, as wanted. Um, this Pantheon picture he used to make a Pantheon out of blocks. Just a lot of great pictures and information, combination again of real images and diagrams. So if you have a kid who's into architecture, this is a great kind of resource to have on hand. Uh, Stephen Beastie's book, History, The Story of Buildings, and we love his cross sections. So we pulled this one out for the Colosseum, and again, a lot of information, but this one did not have, this one did not have a pullout. Some of them have this like great, really detailed cross section, and the Colosseum did not, but it's still, you know, great resource to include. Our last architecture book, um, this was a new find to me when we did our architecture unit study last year. And it's been great for, again, pulling out for our different history units when that type of architecture comes up. So here is the Roman section, which Roman, ancient Rome offered a lot in terms of architecture and um, like city planning and all of that. And so this was a really great book to pull out again. We had already, you know, kind of read this and done this in our architecture unit last year, but just, you know, so much information about the arches and the domes and, uh, you know, keystone blocks and concrete and the roads. So this was just great to pull in. And I love this book in general, just a kind of a peek through it in case you were wondering. Okay. Last step is just some of the work samples that we did. So again, we tie our content areas into language arts. So part of that is using our history notebook from School Nest. And I think we started this notebook with Ancient Rome, we did. And so a lot of different types of writing you will see in here. It's a combination of my writing and his writing and shared writing and copy work and um, original writing, just the whole gamut. Um, 
just depending on what the task was. So we have our vocabulary kind of up here where he was writing the words and then he told me what to write for the definitions, um, some sentence expansion with because but so sentences, um, some little T charts with Republic versus Empire, um, more vocabulary, more sentence expansion, sen expanding from a picture, and again, you can see some of this is his writing and we weren't focused on spelling, so I did not address this. More vocabulary and some word study, sentence expansion, our Roman numeral work. I copied this page from the book and we used it to work through the math, some main ideas and detail work um, from a section of one of our books. And then his research that he did for a Roman god, he chose a Roman god to do a little study on and found these information, these you know, little tidbits of information in our different books, doing some basic research. And then we did some editing on it before he put it into his um, history journal, which I'll show you in just a minute. This is our social studies. A book. This is a Strathmore visual history, not visual history. This is a Strathmore visual artist series book. I have these linked on my Amazon store. They have different sizes. We use the big size with this nice hardcover for science and social studies. And we have a smaller version for nature study. So let me flip to our pages here. We do one page in this a week at the end of the week as a summary. And so we only have one page for each part of our unit here. It's, here's some copy work from History Quest and his map work. We use a light box and trace the maps that are provided in History Quest and then he labels them and we go over them the first week that we are doing a unit study. Here's his legionary drawing and labeling and then his dictation about the Roman army that I wrote down for him. Here is another map for um, later on in the empire. Again, map work is coming from the History Quest curriculum and his writing. Then he got really into aqueducts. So here is his aqueduct drawing. My daughter ended up doing some too. I wish I had them here to show you because she also did an amazing job. And his writing about aqueducts. And here is his um, Roman god. This is kind of a, you know, like a high stakes piece of writing, I guess, um, as rooted in language folks would call it. His drawing of Mars and then his work on Mars that we had used his research from here and did our editing here. And then he came in and did his final draft over here. Then let's see, we did a couple of projects. Um, I don't have this one with us, but we did um, this little catapult kit from Pathfinders. Um, when they say 14 plus, they really mean it. Um, these are not like something your kid can do on their own unless they're a little bit older. This is a team effort and definitely takes some time if you have little friends with you. We also used um, this famous figures of ancient times there was who did they have they had hannibal julius caesar and uh, caesar augustus and i don't have them because they're actually being used to play with right now um but this has been fun um they have for each of them they have a full color version that you cut out and use little um brads to make them movable and then they have a color in version that you can also use i think i have so here's an example this is aristotle so obviously not relevant to Roman times. Um, and the brads I bought were way too big. So if you're buying brads, make sure you don't get the really jumbo ones. Otherwise you have little pokey things sticking out. But you know, they're just these little paper dolls that I didn't think were gonna be as big of a hit as they were, to be honest, um, but they love them and they've been playing with them. So that's great. So that is a wrap on our ancient Rome unit. I will try to pull up a video of our planning in Notion because I know a lot of people would love to see how I plan out a unit study. So I will do that in a separate video if I can get around to it. 
and all the resources will be linked eventually on my website and I will link my Ancient Rome playlist on YouTube below and I will also link my Amazon list for Ancient Rome books. So if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments or you can find me on Instagram at Homespun Childhood. And so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and found some good ideas for your next unit study.